Hey everyone and welcome back. Today we're going to talk about restrictive and obstructive lung diseases. But before talking about those, we have to draw a graph first. So, on the longitudinal axis here, we have the flow and on the horizontal axis we have the volume and liters. Now the volume will be represented as follows. We start from here. So that would be 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. And we will plot the flows in the lungs in both expiration and inspiration. Now, in expiration, we mentioned that when the lung fills the most, it's close up to between 6 and 7 liters. So, the graph will look something like that. This here, or at that point here, is peak expiratory flow. Peak expiratory flow. The maximum uh, flow of air outside the lungs or from the lungs to the atmosphere and that here corresponding to around two is the moment that the volume of the air inside the lungs reached the residual volume so all of the air inside the lungs that was taken throughout the process of inspiration is now outside and only the air that remains in the lung is the air that was initially there which we call the residual volume as we mentioned last time. And then we have the phase of inspiration where the lung fills again. When the lung fills again. So it goes back to the maximum volume and then the expiration takes place and so on. So you can see this is a loop. This is a loop. This is called the flow volume loop. The flow volume loop. And this is very important for us to understand the idea of restrictive and obstructive lung diseases. So what is the difference between restrictive and obstructive lung diseases? Well, Restrictive lung diseases are diseases that restrict the movement of the lung. They restrict the lung to expand, to go into its full capacity. So in that case, the flow volume loop will be exactly the same, same proportions, but it's going to be smaller. It's going to be smaller. we will see something like this. So, as we notice, it's going to be shifted to the right. The volume of the lung filling will be less, as we can see here. But, at the, at the end, we have the proportions between expiration and inspiration volumes are the same. Why are we mentioning this? Because we remember last time we uh, talked about a very important notion called the Tefno index, which was the ratio between forced expiratory volume in one second divided by the vital capacity or the functional vital capacity of the lung. So because of this proportion that was kept in case of restrictive diseases, the Tifno index will still be the same. So in the same person, his Tifno index, before having the restrictive 
um, uh, lung disease and after having the restrictive lung disease the Tefno index will still be the same but the volumes will decrease so this is a very important uh, concept now how can we determine that the volume has shifted at 50% on the curve of expiration we have a point which is called mean expiratory flow 50 percent and on inspiration we have a point which is also called mean inspiratory flow 50 percent as you can see here in restrictive diseases both of them have decreased as well and the ratio between them is still the same the ratio will be the same but the values have decreased so what are some examples for restrictive lung diseases for example if we have a lobectomy if one lobe of the lung is removed now the lung capacity will decrease this is an example for restrictive lung diseases sarcoidosis or uh, lung fibrosis so the lung cannot expand to its full extent and that would cause a restriction on the lung movement therefore we're gonna have a restrictive lung disease alright so how about obstructive lung diseases now in obstructive lung diseases we have something that obstructs the airflow so that expiration is not done properly so the person can inspire but when they try to expire the air there's something obstructing that flow so for example if you have a tumor or if you have bronchiectasis or emphysema all of this can, can obstruct the airways and that would affect the process of expiration and the most common is chronic obstructive pulmonary disease chronic obstructive pulmonary disease for example asthma asthma so if we look here on the flow volume loop how does it look like now due to the insufficiency of the process of expiration we would have a higher volume of air inside the lungs initially speaking because the air accumulates there and we cannot take it out so we will have something like this that would be the peak expiratory flow and then the expiration process will not be fulfilled so instead of the curve going like this we would have something that looks like that and then we would have the inspiration so as we can see the curve or the loop is shifted to the left because we have a higher volume of air inside the lungs the person tries to expire but he cannot reach the full extent of the expiration and therefore there will still be a lot of air inside the lungs and because of that also the person is not gonna inspire a lot as in normal cases because he has already a lot of air inside the lungs and the loop goes on like that so basically that is the difference between obstructive and restrictive lung diseases in some cases we have mixed syndromes where we have both obstructive and restrictive lung diseases so what happens to the Tifano index in the obstructive lung diseases the vital capacity of the lung itself is not affected the vital capacity is not affected but what is affected is the part of expiration as we mentioned so in that case, the FEV1 will decrease while this is 
constant and in that case that would lead to a decrease in the Tefno index. A decrease in the Tefno index. So this is the difference. The main difference between obstructive and restrictive lung diseases is that in obstructive lung diseases we have a decreased Tefno index. In the restrictive lung diseases on the other hand the Tefno index is still the same because expiration and inspiration are still proportional. They still have the same proportion as the normal case. In mixed syndromes, we would have a decrease in everything. We would have a decrease in FEV1, a decrease in FVC, the vital capacity, a decrease in the residual volume, and a decrease in the Tefno index because of the combination of both obstructive and restrictive lung diseases. And that would be the case in a very very severe COPD for example. So that was our lesson for today. I hope it was easy. Next time we're gonna talk about some tests that are done to the patients with pulmonary diseases in order to assess their situation. Until the next time I thank you for watching and see you. Click here to subscribe in order to be notified when new medical video tutorials are uploaded and to check the older videos of medical tutorials and also high school tutorials.